Well, this is a video on this channel, so we start off generally with a question, what are we doing today? Well, today I'm going to switch back to my jewellery roots a little bit, or well, I won't say jewellery roots, but <coughs> we're going to make some jewellery, and that's uh, because my wife's birthday is coming up. And yes, I'm referring to her as the wife and not the senior financial manager at this point. Um, a little bit of backstory. My whole skill base in making jewellery and casting metal was originally something I developed to impress my wife, and that was the sole purpose. It's because I had to travel from Australia all the way to the United States um, to physically present something to her. I wanted to make it count. Now, I've known her since about the year 2000, um, but uh, only ever met her in person probably about nine years ago or nearly 10 now, geez, time has moved on, and she's been in this country for about eight years now. So, uh, her birthday's coming up, it's time to do something special. So, so that we can see what we're doing, I'm going to put the blinds down, and so that she can't see what I'm doing, because I've got to do a bit of design work. Now, you would recall a video where I electrified the blinds, this is why they're handy for the camera. We can wind over the back of my little mini museum over here. Now, the mini museum here has some stuff hiding away. I've got a few little things that I need to grab out of here. These things, if you would have watched, watched last month's um, donations and deliveries video, you would have seen these guys show up. But looking at the views on that, probably not many of you have. Now, my mother kindly donated some opals here. Now, these aren't probably the best samples of opals. Let's move along a little bit, get our exposure value back. Um, where is a better light source? These guys are genuine opals, but they're not really the greatest. And, uh, as you can probably tell from this, I have a bunch of other little things in here. I probably need to change my camera angle down. Give me a moment. Different camera angle here, and we're going to need some tweezers. I have a bunch over here. So I've got a few little goodies in here. Now I have some tritium glow tubes in here. Um, I've got a blue and a green one. Um, they could be useful for something. Now I have here an opal triplet, uh, which she seemed to like, and they are actually notoriously difficult to handle with tweezers. So I'll try and put this on my hand here and get a good view. This is an opal triplet that I'm looking at, which I think has got a quartz top and a little sliver of opal in here. That's about the minimum range I can do here. Excuse the blood smear on my hand, guys. It's been a rough afternoon. Um, so there's this one, but I am not as much of a fan of that one. Now, I have a fully synthetic opal in here as well. I like these synthetic ones. They actually look stunning. Which looks I go for. So this one looks really nice. Um, well, what else have we got to work with? Um, here we go. Whoop. These are hard to handle, guys. You'll just have to deal with it here. This is another triplet. Um, this one has got some better colours in it. Um, but we'll look at what we've got here and work with it. I'm probably going to make a couple. Um, well, I think my mother has been growing quietly impressed with my jewellery skill as it's improved over the years. So I think I'm going to do something in brass. Um, I'll probably do so. I've got a little bit of brass left that belonged to my late brother. Um, so I might use a little bit of that, and I might take this teardrop shape opal, um, and do something for my mother with it. Uh, but of course, I'll give my wife a good look at what we have. Now she handed these to me going, they're subpar opals. They probably, you know, I might be able to do some jewelry with them. She wasn't expecting me to make something for her with them. But they are a genuine opal. So I think probably it'd be fairly meaningful. And this one's got the most uniform shape. This would be the easiest one to convert or translate into AutoCAD shape-wise. This guy could be a little bit more of a, um, a challenge to get out of here or to get the shape right. But I guess I can cut some masters. They've got a nice little bit of green going on in here. Um, I've got the backlight on for the camera happening. I don't know if this light will actually bring that green out at all. Not really. I need to get some better lighting. So, yeah, I guess you guys can probably have a bit of a comment too about these different stones and see what we can do with them. Um, 
these tubes are probably a little bit big to do the kind of dainty jewelry that I'm planning on doing. So um, I think I'm probably going to go with an opal. I really want to use this synthetic opal on the back on a brass backing. They really jump out at you. But when I showed these to my wife a little while ago, she did seem to like um, the little opal triplet, which was actually a freebie that I got um, with everything else. Now that was the one that I purchased. Where's the freebie here? This guy was a freebie. She actually seemed to show a bit of interest in this one. Come on, focus. You can see what I'm doing. There's my autofocus range right there. So this guy. So I'm doing this in 4K, or at least I hope I am. So you should be able to see a pretty good bit of opal in there. So um, we might work with that one. And these ones, I've already got the profile set up for the 6mm oval in that. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have a bit of a think, and once I'm done, I'm going to probably resort to the notepad and start sort of doing a bit of a rough design on that and see what we can do. All right, so let's carry back to this in a moment. All right, so we have selected our opal. I uh, Normally I'll try and hide this from my wife, but uh, a bit hard in this house. So, um, and look, I don't really feel comfortable hiding things from her anyway. We've selected the opal triplet with a little sliver of black, come on autofocus, little sliver of black opal in here. Um, that's the one she likes. Um, I would really like to use the blue synthetic, I reckon it would look stunning. But this is what she's chosen. Now this is supposedly a 6mm, so we're going to measure this up. And um, it looks like the LCD on my calipers is very dim. Let me find a new battery. Now, fortunately, at some point in the past, I went to the cheap store and I ordered or bought a card of all these batteries that I'll never use. I'm pretty sure this uses an AG13. Let's have a quick look here. Um, that's an AG13, I think. Yep, you can go. You can go in. I'm not doing too bad for having limited dexterity and feeling. I guess I've changed so many of those things in the past. I forgot that this thing's a little cantankerous with batteries. Give me a moment and I'll be back. We're working. I also took a moment to give my lens a little bit of a clean as well. Now let's just um, put this around sideways here. Now I've got it on my notepad. It just makes handling things so much easier. Now let's zero this nicely. And we'll just check, how long are we? We are going to be... Uh, I'll go till we touch here somewhere. This is a bit hard because one of my eyes is not... One of my eyes aren't working quite as well as they used to. This is a bit hard. So it's a 5.85 or 5.86 long. So close enough to 6. So 5.86. This matters because I'm going to customise the, the master on the laser cutter for this. Let's pick her up in about this way here. And let's have a look here. So we're looking at 4.14 wide. So uh, 4.14, these are millimeters. So we're looking at a nice oval shape and we are 4.14 by 5.86. And that will be an oval shape. I'm pretty sure I can use the ellipse tool in AutoCAD to get pretty damn close to that and just give it about a, like a 0.2mm um, offset on that. And that should probably compensate for the expansion and contraction and whatnot. All right, next step is to figure out what we're going to do with the design. Uh, but before I do that, um, I want to make sure I get this guy in a safe spot. I'm going to stick it with a bit of blue tack so I don't lose it and uh, put it back in the holder here. So, all right, back in there gently. All right. Oh, okay, directly. we'll put that back in a safe place. I'm going to do a bit of thinking and get some inspiration and figure out what I might do for the design and we'll go through the various iterations this time of exactly how I do the design process. So give me some time to get my brain warmed up. I've got to go find its pull cord. Now, the aspect ratio is going to be a bit funny here because I need to be uh, able to make some room to move on the paper. So, 
before I get too inspired, I've got to think about the technical aspect of this. Um, generally, my uh, approach to making jewellery is based around repeatability and manufacturing ease. I sort of come at it about ass about and so or backwards, you could say. My apprentice is having some fun too in the background. Um, so most people would go, it's a one-off, and they'll do a lot of things that are very labour-intensive. Because I've got multiple sclerosis and dexterity problems, I try and work things from more of a manufacturing perspective where you would do things to make it more efficient and less manual handling. The reason I do that is not because I want to make large volumes, is because I want to save myself some time and effort. So I'll probably do this in a sand mould, and uh, I'm probably going to make a flat-backed piece of jewellery. So I'll probably do a flat back on it. And it, uh, my masters, I've got 3 mil, and I've got a little bit of thinner stuff. I've got about 2.5 mil stuff. So I'm probably going to go with a flat profile, if we were looking on it sideways. And this will probably be either 2.8 um, or 3 mil thick. Or 3 mil um, millimetres, when I'm saying mil. And then I'll probably adhere the opal to the surface somehow. That's probably how I'm going to do it. Um, in terms of attaching rings, actually, let's take a look at what we've got for some fixing hardware. Alright, so we're going to think technically about what we've got here. So we've got some nice little rings here. Now these aren't necessarily gold or silver. I think the gold or silver plate. In fact, these were donated by my mother. Um, I have a bunch of clasps and clips here. Of various forms. Alright, so these would be interesting, so they're good for the chains. What else did we get given? Okay, I do actually I did actually get given a couple of genuine silver chains to work with here too. So actually I like this little I think this is either a Figaro weave or it's a snake weave. It's a very nice chain. I like that. What else is in here? So I think we're gonna use a chain. So we'll probably make it as a pendant. Um, so that will probably be better. Rather than a ring, I'm probably going to try opal as a ring at some point. Um, but I'm going to focus on pendants because I'll probably do a second one for my mother. My mother's got um, rheumatoid arthritis, so rings are not really an option these days. Her fingers are changing shape at a fairly alarming rate. So um, I think we're probably going to put a ring like this on here. So we're going to have to go with a design. I, I thought maybe we'd go with an oval design to match the oval of that. And then put some shaping or some detail to fill in here. Some nice texturing. I also thought of making it very, very small and just having a very, very fine line on that. But that gives me very little room to work with. In terms of attaching the ring, I could just simply drill a hole in the top here. But, you know, I've got a fancy laser cutter so I could make a nice little groove like that on the top um, or I could go with something completely out of kilter um, and you know like <laughs> something like that with an oval that kind of looks like crap but it's worth doing this though my wife had expressed an interest in some jewelry I saw recently she actually sent me a photo and it was a, sort of like a mini monolith almost and it was square on the edges with an opal in the middle or with or not rather that a stone of some kind and I guess I could probably put something in there, or I could... One other idea I had was to take some jewellery here, put a, a tritium tube in the top, and then put an opal on the top, one of those natural opals, and have it glow through. But um, I don't know how well that would work. I'll have to do a test on that later on. Um, so yeah, I could go some sort of... I, I like curvy corners. This is the thing. This is my style. I'm uncomfortable doing square corners. So I could do a rounded edge sort of shape like this and do some rounded corners like that and then stick my opal in like that. Or I could stick the opal as the top of a candle shape and do something like that. Um, I could do something creative and then do some, some, uh, ed some detail on the edge there um, to make it sort of, yeah, look a bit like that to make it a bit more convincing. Maybe like some little like a chain of dots along the edge. That could be getting to the resolution of the sand. It could be a bit difficult. Um, and I say resolution, but it's the grain size of the sand. Anyway, I'm going to dwell on some of these ideas for a minute, and we'll come back. 
All right, so we're back at the drawing board again. I've had some dinner and we had a bit of a think about things and a discussion. So my wife has um, Native American heritage and genetics. Um, so we are probably going to go with an arrowhead design. That's the flavor of the month at the moment. In fact, it's been a flavor for quite some time. So we had a look and this is the sort of shape we want to do. At the moment, she's wearing one that has um, some Nordic symbols on there and it's got eight cardinal directions on there. So sort of a bit of a variation with that would be some radiating recessed lines off this. So I've reduced the size to give me just something to roughly measure off. So I have a bit of an idea of scale. Now I'm going to go over to this bit over here where we were talking about adhering the gem to the face. I forgot to mention that generally I will emboss the timber master that I'm making. I'll do an engraving pass and drop it in usually about a millimeter or, or probably about a half a millimeter, somewhere around that. So I've got a little bit of face that's rough and also a bit of a lip around the edge that tends to retain the gem much more reliably. So um, I think at this point we can put this guy back in and we can dive into AutoCAD. So I'll probably turn that into a time lapse and put some interesting music beside it. And um, so I hope that's entertaining. Normally I work pretty quickly in AutoCAD, but I think I'm going to take my time tonight and just sort of have a few attempts. So you might see me cock up a few things in AutoCAD, but anyway, let's, uh, let's move on. Well, it's been about two weeks since the last clip and um, much has happened and some stressful things as well. But uh, we're pulling through most of that. My workshop, on the other hand, has suffered at the hand of a storage crisis. So 
um, you're going to have to deal with that being a little bit messed up. I'm also rearranging all my GoPro stuff at the moment. But anyway, we're going to laser cut this thing. Um, we're going to laser cut it out. We're going to laser cut our master out of a bit of offcut MDF. I have a big pile here. Um, I need to pack this pile of offcuts down and discard a majority of it. But uh, that is not 3mm stuff. That's a little thinner. But that's actually good. That's about 2.8mm, I think. That'll be nice. It'll make a nice dainty pendant. Um, I've got to get a couple of my GoPro three ways happening here. Um, and we'll get the furnace warmed up. I've got to find my casting sand. Where has all that gone? I think I have my two part mold here, which got a little bit singed in the last effort, but that should work. And I have a bucket of Petrobon casting sand, which is still in reasonable shape. Okay. Should be able to use that. Now I know where it is. Alright. So we've got password here, which is, I don't care if you guys see it. You're not going to get access to this thing. It's turned off 90% of the time. Um, and I have so much junk in here, I don't know what to do with it all. Probably discard it in an appropriate fashion. Uh, now, yep. All right, let's uh, let's get everything fired up. GoPro, stop recording. All right, so we're sitting at the workshop computer here, and we're going to make a um, little modification to the file. Um, oh, I need to undo that. What I want to do is um, take this lot, all the extraneous imagery, and we're going to save that as a new file here. Just save as. Um, and make it uh, laser ready. It's the naming convention I use. All right. Um, now we're going to prep that and send it to the printer or the plotter, rather, which go our previous plot settings. I'm going to keep that about two mil off the corner. That's fine. We'll send that across. Now I have an idea. I was going to use this 2.8 mil um, MDF, but. Some of the stuff I used for the cabinetry in my ambulance, I've still got a bit of an off cut here. This has got a nice uh, sort of very thin vinyl coating on the top. I thought for the face of things that might actually produce a better master molding and probably a little bit less work for me. So I'm going to try that out. I'm just, I'm not going to use screws to hold it down this time. I'm just going to use blue tack um, and I will refocus on that particular corner. It's only a short run. That should overhang enough off the corners that I don't have any trouble with that. So we'll do you. And we'll do our auto focus. See how we go. I know it's a noisy environment. That's why I'm using my helmet camera. And I might stick a uh, GoPro in here to time lapse the whole deal there. So um, where is that GoPro? Get you in here get you started and it's on ultra wide so it should catch the whole thing and crucially the GoPros are small enough that they fit underneath here um, and they slide around if that collides with it um, I nearly laser cut a hole through my phone once um, now I do need to make a slight adjustment to this file so for the vector mode I'm going to bring it back to 0.6 speed um, and for the raster mode, which I should have done first, raster setting, we want it reasonably deep. So normally I do about 38% speed for raster cuts. Um, I think I'm going to stick it to about 20% speed this time, because I've got a little bit of vinyl on the top. Go to about 20% and we'll do smart acts, yep. Okay, now we need a little bit of air. Um, my airline is connected here. Yep. Go over. I need to get a proper pressure regulator on this. Oh, oh wait. No. We do have air. Ah, oh, I'm on the wrong airline. This is going to get noisy. Oh, that hurt my ears. I should have worn earmuffs. All right. All right. 
there's a bit of water come out of that regulator too so I think I probably need to drain that compressor all right we've got some air happening in here let's go hang on start guys all right now we're working away all right we'll cut to the time lapse and we'll be back Cutting is finished. I'm going to grab a bit of uh, this blue tack here to help lift it off, or some of this might do. And we got it out. That's going to be a nice little dainty arrowhead. Should take our opal. And I'll give this face a bit of a clean up, although I'm going to put some graphite on it anyway. Um, but that should work. I'm going to test that it fits the opal first, and then uh, we'll move on from there. But yeah, I think a little bit of surface cleaner might clean that glue off, and that might help. So, it'd be nice to know. Oh, the other thing we can do now is we can turn all of this off. Um, now, my helmet cam is a bit taller than everything, so I do tend to headbutt things. So, sorry about that, guys. All right, um, let's go test this. Right, we're at the desk again. Hopefully the audio works because I'm on that noise cancelling mic on the helmet cam still. Um, ha, there's another ant still kicking around that was left over from my um, ant problems yesterday. All right, that should get most of the junk off the top. Give it a bit of a dry out. All right, that looks a little better. Okay, let's find our opals. Okay, we've got some opals and some tweezers here. Now, um, Jess wanted the triplet, I believe. That one. I'll just go and double check. Um, I might get her to choose, because I do find with these, if I try and keep things as a secret, um, it's really hard to... Uh, it's hard to keep a secret from your wife, and I try not to anyway. I want that one up that way. Here's the other triplet. So we have... As we discussed before, two triplets and a synthetic. I'll go see which one she wants. All right, so we've got, we're gonna test this here. And the synthetic will probably fit. That's what I, I would put the synthetic in, I quite like that. But um, we've got the other triplet here, which sits a bit higher. That's gonna be a little bit harder to position there. I might have to actually make that bit a little bit smaller. That's that first triplet, and I think the one you were interested in is this little sliver of black opal in the triplet. Mm -hmm. That one there. Do you still want to do that one? Hmm. I think... Or actually, this one looked a lot better. You reckon this one? Put it back again. Oh, I'll do this one. I like that better. Like that one? Yeah. All right. Is what I might do, I might actually recut this would make it a little bit deeper um, so that that sits in a little bit better because that's going to be yeah, it'll probably shrink a little bit once we cast it too but yeah, I might recut that with a, a deeper impression mm -hmm. and see if we go over there and that, that'll make it a little bit easier to fit that opal there will be a little bit of shrinkage but you'll still have a little bit of um, overhang so you might end, it might end up with a gluing that it's a slight bit cockeyed, that's all no, that's fine. That's right, so I might end up looking a bit like that. That's fine. All right, just not unless you're really up close, you don't notice. All right, so yeah, so you're not, not a fan of the, no. the synthetic? No. So It's not me. Not you? No. All right, so we're going to go, all right, well, so 
We're going to go with the second triplet there. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, no worries. We'll work with that one. All right, so the missus gets what the missus wants, um, which means we have to fire everything up again. And I'm going to recut another master, this time with a deeper impression. Um, so I've got to send everything to the cutter again and wait for it to boot up. But that's okay. It's better doing it at this stage. And I hear a nasty rattle up here. I think I've got something stuck in here. assembled. Now it's time to uh, get our furnace happening, which means we need to disconnect pretty well everything in the workshop. All right, we're going to get you warming up in a minute, but we want to put some brass in. I'm going to use some leftovers from previous runs um, and see how we go here. Now, I'm not using my late brother's brass for this one because I'm getting limited on that. Um, there might be some more come out of the woodwork later, but that's pretty well what's left of my brother's brass. And this one's more of a between me and my wife rather than memorial to my brother, so probably don't need to do that. I'll pick all the bits that should fit in here. I'll try and get as much brass as I can in here just in case I have a cock up like an overspill or something. These are all the nice clean bits that I've cut off previous casts. So I know it's pretty pure. There's less junk in this stuff. That I'm going to leave out. Some of this stuff I could probably cut or break up and it'll fit in there a bit better. Oh, brass is tough stuff. All right, we'll get this filled and we'll be back. Note to self, don't use uh, Supercraft cutters on brass. They just fall to pieces. All right, they're useless. Where's my bin? Oh, where has my bin gone? All right, um, note to self, guys, clean up before your bin disappears. All right, um, well, oh, there is a roof there. I'm going to start this guy warming up. While I work on getting some other little bits of brass sorted. There's the angry buzz. Alright, we'll see you shortly. I got a little bit sidetracked watching the lock picking lawyer. Um, so we're pretty close to being ready. I'm going to give it a bit of a test. I haven't got a lot of strength in my hand today too. Uh, my last infusion, they went needle in the back of the hand, and I think they nicked a tendon, and they did. It just feels really funny. Anyway, we want to um, do a quick bit of a test and see um, how molten this stuff is. Now, don't breathe this in. Oh, there's a bit of stuff stuck at the top. So I'm going to have to leave that for a minute. It's pretty close to being at temperature, though. Just going to let that little solid chunk melt in just a little bit and then we'll be pouring some brass. So I think I can probably feel that when I get in here. Yep, she feels pretty good. Alright, do not breathe the stuff from brass, it's not good for you. Alright, let's get out of the airflow a bit. Got water at hand, I think. The water can come out of the way a bit so that when I pour it, it's good. 
Now, the astute among you will notice I'm wearing shorts. I have my splash guard in case I get bowling or all sorts of other stuff. Alright, looks pretty good. Let's pour some brass. I hope this goes well. Let's use my right hand today. Alright, here we go. Alright. I'm going to plonk that back in here for a minute. And then I'll get my little ingots and I'll pour some moulds in them. I should have prepped them ahead of time. Always messages when I'm least interested in getting them. Alright. Let's pour myself a little ingot of brass while we're at it too with the excess. Oh, there goes my desk. Well, and there goes a big hunk of other crap. This is why we have water on hand, guys. So we can put my desk out. It's also why we do this with a separate desk. Now, I need to back off. <coughs> my throat is getting a little sore. Alright. Now we need to put the mould out. I hope that worked. It didn't really feel like it did, but... We'll see. This stuff moves pretty quick. We'll shut that and let it come down in temperature slowly. Alright, well we're going to have to wait for things to cool off and I've got to deal with the chunk of crap out of that. Now it's starting to stink in here. <laughs> Alright, we'll be back. as much of this scene as I can. I think we're going to have to make a smaller mould for the next lot. Alright. Let me get the mould apart. Okay, well there's sanding. Oh! Oh, oh. It might have actually worked. And I've got some grooves in there. That might work out right. So let's just give this a smack. Um, let's move this camera around a bit. It worked. Alright, and it's not too bad. I can probably I can probably machine that down. It actually might look alright. Okay. Alright, I think we are Oh I've got to stand up. That's getting hard these days. We have to clean up a lot of stuff. <laughs> Problems when you don't have too much energy. Alright, so there's that little bit of sand that, that fell off the side a bit, but I can trim that down or grind it down, that won't be too much of a problem. I'm going to leave it on this bit, just while I do most of the machining, then I'll trim this post off and then machine it down a little bit more. <coughs> My post did move a bit during uh, manufacture, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Alright. Anyway, let's get this cut off and machined and stuff. I'll get all this packed up and then we'll go from there. Alright, so I've cleaned it up enough that now this little rod here is getting in the way. So, time to trim it off. It's important when you're doing hacksaw work use the full length of the blade rather than just getting up in one little bit or in the middle use the full stroke of the blade you release your pressure as you pull backwards just a little bit and don't put a lot of downward pressure when you're pushing forwards let the saw do the job you've got to put a lot of downward force on really any kind of cutting tool probably means that it's blunt and with, with brass you just can't go too fast There we go. There we go. Almost there. And that will be what kind of warm, so we'll grab it with pliers again. Now we're getting somewhere. That can go back to be remelted. Oh, over there somewhere. Wow. I can still feel the heat off that. 
all right this is probably fairly warm but you can see the front is a little shiny the edges are starting to clean up um, this edge is nice and clean I won't touch that now until I hit it with sandpaper but this edge I've still got a bit to go so time to dip it in some water and cool it off and then we'll be back all right so we've got the edges cleaned up now we've got to do the base so I stuck it down to a piece of wood with some blue tack and that just lets us work on this without losing my fingertips this is a bit that takes a while got to grind that bit down just over time Oops, so now it's started to shift it's got too hot so we've got to let it cool off and then we'll go back to it again and again and again and again we'll get there eventually all right well two days has passed um, and a whole bunch of stuff has happened um, we've actually had to uh, to go to court to get um, some personal safety orders because some threats were made to myself and my family uh, so it's kind of thrown a spanner in the works for this project we are going to continue but um, this this little project here um, I think it's going to get remelted. I think I'm going to do this out of white metal. The detail is just not coming out of this, and this is always the problem I've had with sand or petro bond, is getting the fine detail that I want in my stuff. Now, my wife uh, is partial to silver, so um, what we have over here is uh, white metal. This is about 98% tin. This is lead-free bearing metal. Um, and I've made a bit of jewelry in the past with it and it retains the detail very very well um, one of the reasons for that is I can cast it straight into laser cut MDF which I have a bunch of old molds down here we can probably have a look at um, let's have a quick look here yeah, this is going to be a long episode see this is one of the the mold for one of the memorial plaques are made for my brother so we can get text and detail and find little leaves and everything in it I think that will do what we want it to do. So I'll probably laser cut a mold and do it out of white metal and it polishes up very nicely as well. So uh, that will be where we're going to go with this project. Um, my wife's birthday was yesterday and Mother's Day I think is either today or tomorrow and I'd hope to have an opal, a genuine opal pendant for my mother at that point too, um, preferably out of brass and I have a genuine opal for that as well that she actually gave me out of her collection so um that might be a separate video though and uh also as a result of the troubles i mentioned previously we're going to spend a night somewhere else in the ambulance and probably take the argo out we need some stress relief at the moment that's more valuable to the family than a piece of jewelry so um this video you will see this complete but for me that's going to be a couple of days before I get round to finishing this. You guys will see it real quick. Um, but this project's been on the go for about a week now. and been in planning for about a month. Um, there's so much to happen. Things just... Things happen like this a lot with me. Like there's some stuff here. Some uh, casting stuff. That's about a year and a half, nearly two years old now. Um, and that's a project I just haven't got round to finishing life happens I guess so alright uh, that's enough for the rambling uh, we're gonna continue on I've got some masters here as well I'll come up with something so uh, anyway um, where we're going though I am gonna take the GoPros and we've got some more SD cards so we're gonna go and have some fun out there and that'll be another video as well and uh, I think with the Telstra plan, I might actually be able to upload something while I'm out in the field. We'll see what happens. All right, we'll cut to the next section of this, which for me will be in a couple of days' time. All right, so we're back in the workshop, and another three days has passed. Um, I've overshot Mother's Day, and I've overshot my wife's birthday as well. But um, I needed to take a bit of time alone with this project, um, and I had a bit of a date with Dremel. My workshop is overloaded with junk at the moment. So I took this little ball cutter uh, for my Dremel and a grinding disc, a hacksaw, buffing wheel, all sorts of other stuff. My little jeweler's vice, one of which I have two of these. 
Um, I did end up putting some vice marks in it, but that might make it look more rustic. I've taken a bit of a note out of my hearing aid repair days and actually hand carved a lot of this. But um, my dexterity is nothing like what it used to be when I fixed hearing aids. That's why I try and rely on the machines to do the precision for me. But I've hand carved this and I've got the disc in here, uh, the ball cutter along these bits in here and I used it to carve these out and to make the seat for the stone a lot cleaner. So uh, basically now I'm going to take some strips of sandpaper, shove in the slot, just finish this all up. It's going to take a month of Sundays but we'll get there and then I'll drill my little hole in the top here and finally polish everything up. So we've got a bit more to go yet um, and this is probably a long episode but I did go to the trouble of designing up um, a mold for a white metal version of this. That may come in the future uh, but for now I'm going to persevere with the brass now that I had some time off camera to just work with it. I figured if I was going to remelt it I might as well um, have a crack at trying to make it look good before I melted it. So I think that I think will do. Um, it hopefully it will look better when it's shiny. It won't be as technically precise as I'd like, but I think it's going to achieve the same result. And uh, to cover up the sharp edge here, I might take a little bit of um, copper wire or something like that and do a couple of laps around there to make it look like it's tied. Um, so we'll see how that works. Anyway, um, let's move on with the project. <laughs> through these bits but I think it'll start to look very nice very soon to get some of the blue tack and buffing compound out of the grooves it's starting to look okay it's a little bit wonky on that side but I think we're gonna let it go with a rustic look at this point this is far from what I'm happy with but uh, my wife is kind of happy with the progress so far so we're gonna go with what she's happy with um, I'm not. I really want to do this a lot better. Um, anyway, it's, uh, we might go and get a stone set in this, and um, I'm going to call it quits because I'm really sick of this project at this point. So uh, let's Should move on. Lift it up again. All right, guys. Here goes nothing. We'll wait before I do that. Crack the junk off the top of the super glue bottle that will help me get a better flow in there all right careful 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 that 
should be plenty to do the job. I'm going to breathe on it a little bit because the humidity from my breath will make it a little tacky. Well, it's going to overflow to the edges a little bit. There's the tricky bit. Well, I can't leave it. Actually, I can. Because if I find a rag real quick, I can wipe a little bit of the excess glue off and it won't overflow over the sides. That'll be good there. Oh. Okay, so I think the tweezer method is going to be... Okay, I may have cocked this up is not ideal but let's see if we can resurrect our mistake here by getting this in position it's getting nice and tacky now I think I don't want to mess with that any further because I'll probably make it worse quit while you're ahead Now it does have a, it is slightly raised at one edge, but I think that's because it's a triplet. Now, um, fun fact, super glue is moisture activated. Well, that's CA glue for you Americans, cyanoacrylate. So by breathing on it, I add a little bit of moisture, which helps accelerate the cure slightly. But we want nice long crystal structures to make it nice and strong now so we're going to leave that sit for a while and we will be back all right for the next bit we want to um we want to simulate some bindings so i'm going to remove some cores out of cat5 cable and this is solid core stuff not stranded so we'll take a piece of this Straighten it out while it's easy to do, and then run it through a pair of pliers here, or side cutters. These are flush cutters actually, be loads of wire. This is where my dexterity is going to be my enemy. I'm going to drop you through here, and drop you through, and do a couple of laps like that. And it gives us our binding. Now we want to hold this together on the back. So here we go. I'll go up like that. You can go better on there. I may have to use the tiniest little bit of solder for this. Um, I don't want to pull that stone out. I've got to be careful. Probably should have done this before I put the stone in. can come in like that okay now I need to get my micro iron warmed up so let's go do that all right so while we wait for our iron to warm up I'm getting my positioning right I'm going to uh, trim the tip off my 60 40 10 lead solder I would use silver solder normally uh, but I just don't have any. I've only got 60, 40, tin lead, so I'm going to use a very tiny amount of this. Um, and that should allow for, uh, well, what am I trying to say? I'm not working on a script here, guys. Um, this is mostly going to be worn over clothes, not up against the skin. Um, and brass is really better in that position. It does tend to tarnish very quickly. So, what are we? We're about 345 degrees. We're going to need a little bit more temp in this um, because we're going to have a lot of heat sinking going on here. So we're waiting till we're about 400. Alright, so the thermostat's clicked at 400, that's good. Alright. Just the tiniest bit to hold them in. Alright, done. That's all we needed for that the sharp bit down a little bit and I'll get a little bit of um, cleaner onto that in a minute and uh, now we need to put some fitments on the top let me see what I've got in stock all right we 
have a collection of bits and bobs here were donated by my mother including some of these rings here these are plated rings but um, they are what I could afford as you probably gathered this is not the most expensive piece of equipment or piece of jewelry that ring might fit but it could also be a little thick um, that's got the right diameter and um, yeah so they've got the right diameter let's see if I can fit one of these guys on these can be notoriously difficult to get the tweezers between to get on there um, especially with my limited dexterity okay give me a moment I've got to do this off camera the camera is really distracting me okay a bit of swearing and correct tongue holding later I've got the ring started here so now we should be able to get it right across the top and hopefully without scratching up that nice polish there's our ring on the top now I've got to pick a chain now we have looked at chains before and my wife selected a fairly chunky looking chain I think it would clash with it I've got this really nice smooth S-weave chain that I like a lot and then I've got this Tanglematic 9000 chain here that I hate with a passion and these are silver chains see this this stuff is who who came up with this idea for a chain give me two hours while I <laughs> untangle this yeah okay worst chain ever I got this stuff off after it was in a big wadded knot and the second I got it off it just untangled itself that I, I, I hate that chain not never ever using that so we've got this nice chain here or we've got this big chunky chain here now I don't know I don't like the idea of this kind of chain but uh, this one looks really nice I like this one both of which are pretty unruly they fall off the bench pretty quick but yeah I think I want this to be a little non-traditional look and that chain link is a pretty traditional look so I think we're going to stick it on this one and see how we go like that all right I'll hook that in there we go all right let's find a good backdrop and give us a good look at this in fact my hand might work as a backdrop where's my viewfinder so you guys might be able to see this my phone is playing up a little bit in it does normally good photos and good footage uh, so i'm using a gopro we're going to make do with what we have but I like this. This is a nice bit of jewellery. The back is a tiny little bit of a join there, but I think this is rather nice. Even if it does look hand carved, it's come out more acceptably than I had expected. But uh, I might have another shot at this design later on with a better casting medium. But anyway, um, normally I'd get a reaction shot. Um, I'm not going to this time. I think I'm going to give this to her and I'm going to enjoy the moment myself. So I'll see you on the next time. I hope uh, you had fun watching this. I certainly didn't making it. So let's move on. See you in the next video. Hope you've had fun.